What are you looking at? I'm just getting ready for this video that we're trying to film. <laughs> All right, y'all, so uh, in a twist of events, the Drop Bar World Cup, oh, dang it, let me start over. Hey, y'all, in a sudden twist of events, the Drop Bar World Cup is now a race winning bike not just something that we came up with. Race winning gravel bike. Gravel bike. You need... Well, no, there's, there's 20 miles of mountain bike. You know, oh. You probably saw from the thumbnail and the title, but uh, over the weekend, I won a bike race, which is not something that normally happens, so I'm actually really excited. Um, I think the only races I've ever won are in Indiana, so to go to something and actually win it was super cool and unexpected. Um, so Ozark Gravel Dude did the 400 mile last year. This year, they have a 200 mile option and I thought that was really cool uh, definitely more my speed in terms of like distance I had some pretty ridiculous outrageous goals that um, I'm not sure are even possible at this stage in time I'm pretty sure it's possible to go faster than my time um, and maybe that'll be my goal for next year but yeah I had this idea in my head that I was gonna break daylight basically like do the whole ride before it got dark which i was off by about seven and a half hours that's kind of close i was really close to <laughs> succeeding in my goal there's about 20 miles of single track and it's black diamond stuff it honestly is awesome trail but um it just slowed me down a ton and then you whenever you start to actually think about like what twenty three thousand feet of climbing really means like yeah you're not going very fast and actually i i, I was down on myself because like when i was out there i was like man i'm going so slow but i was also winning so i was like oh i guess i'm winning maybe i'm not going so slow so it was 196 miles Moving time was 18 and a half. Total time was like 20 hours, 15 minutes. So I think that average speed is just for this time. So the actual average, including stops, was 9.73. And I, I filmed some clips of uh, just kind of getting ready for this event. A little bit last minute, actually a lot of it last minute. I literally was packing at 1 a.m. It's past 1 a.m. So for me, I'm doing the 200 mile this year. I was trying to finish before the sun went down, which means I have to average like a 15 mile an hour or so average, something close to that. In the event I don't do that, I'll have to ride in the dark. Worst case scenario, four hours in the dark. This is the bike setup that I've spent the last hour working on. This is the Drop Bar Epic World Cup. We're gonna be running the Thunderbirds, the Super Ground 2.35. And I'm honestly a little scared to run those. I am trying to pack extra inner tubes, but I've been riding these tires a lot and nothing's happened. I'm just gonna go for it. Definitely can fix a flat out there. The Brain Fork, which is really great for gravel. Um, I will be running my Zip Aero Bars. These are, only, I never ride with these other than at events and they always seem to work out really well. This video is actually sponsored by Wahoo. They heard about how bad of an experience I had using a Garmin last year and they gave me this new element roam to use. Um, I've always been a fan of the computers and I'm familiar with how it works and everything. I'm very excited to trust that I will be able to see where I'm going. Um, I couldn't do that with the Garmin last year. So if, if anybody watched that video, that was the only thing that really went wrong. We'll link that video in the description. Yeah. 2023 Doom experience. Yeah. So I just zip tied it to the middle of the arrow bar and that's actually super Watch. Definitely be seeing more of the Wahoo as this video goes on. Thank you to Wahoo for sponsoring the video and sponsoring the ride. The Epic World Cup fits two water bottles um, and it really only fits like 22 ounce bottles. Ed, who I'm excited to hang out with this weekend, last year he taught me a lot about bike packing and he told me that he had a bladder in his bag and that's um, just like a way better way to do it. And I've kind of came up with this makeshift last minute situation. It's not like a perfect size for what I'm trying to do. It's from a hydration fanny pack. It's from a fanny pack, 50 ounces. So put this back in here. And that actually, honestly, it, it fits pretty nicely. Like it really doesn't have that big of a, like so far that's really good. But this is kind of the big benefit of doing it this way, which is I can just start putting stuff in the bag. And I was kind of looking for a way to carry more stuff, stuff that I don't need um, like immediately. So like boom, now my pump is on the bike. 
in a spot that's out of the way, carrying about the same amount of water, but also gaining some storage, which was kind of the goal. The way that I've configured this, this kind of works really well because I can grab this and I've, I've attached a magnet to the top of that. So this kind of magnets on. I also will be running my U-Sui pack. So I'm gonna have a total of three liters of liquid on my body. I want this to just be entirely food. Driving nine hours tomorrow, I'll do some updates on the road. We did the math, he leaves at like 6 a.m. He'll be there around three or four. I'm gonna leave at like, like, Five. You always say that, and then you're always hours late, but five is a good goal. I support five. If you followed Ozark Doom, you know that you have to charge up your gremlin bell. And this this year, I got Jesus Christ. I mounted Jesus on my bike right here. I had him with me for the whole ride. He was right there. I'm sure there's some good photos of that whole charging up the bell ritual, but then we kind of just took off. First thing that happened was I was just kind of hanging out up the road from Horseshoe Canyon Ranch, hanging out with some friends I made over the last year, and then suddenly I was alone. And that's going to be a theme for the rest of this video is that I was so lonely and alone the whole time. <laughs> that was something I was not mentally prepared for was how alone I was. So basically from the end of the ranch driveway for the next 20 hours, I was effectively alone, uh, which is weird. But I also led the race from that point on. I didn't know at the time, but I never lost my lead in the event. I remember this from last year, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to be mountain biking here very shortly. Taking the single track section pretty, uh, not super conservative, but like, I don't know, basically going a little bit slower because I have extra weight. And then you do a single track, kind of like floaty, rocky downhill trail. And that's where I first felt like, I knew I was in good position, but I also, I, I talked a lot about how scared I was of running these tires. And th if I was gonna rip a tire, like it definitely was gonna happen in this, this single track section at the very beginning. Nothing bad happened though, and they never flatted the whole event, which I am a little surprised by, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, I went realizing, like with hindsight, I can go back and see like, my time was fairly fast through there, but the uh, at the time I thought I was being very conservative. And then you hit the bottom of the single track and you start climbing back up, and that's where the race split. So all of the people that were doing Doom took a right-hand turn, and all the people that are doing despair took a left hand turn this never really affected me because i wasn't with anybody so i didn't have to say bye to anybody or anything like that but and that filter came in super clutch there the decision to only wear the backpack and bring this and just refill along the route was genius shout out to scott for <laughs> coming up with that idea because yeah like the water was very clean it's a national forest for most of the race or whatever you would call it at the end of the race, Ed told me that he just didn't even bother to filter the water and he just drank it out of the creek. Everybody could learn something from Ed. Shout out to Ed, I know he watches these videos. So that was kind of my first water resupply. And that was also, that creek crossing was part of the headwater single track. At mile 50, still kind of on the single track. Yo, what's up? <laughs> That's like right where I'm going. Hopefully the sheep doesn't attack me. So this mountain bike trail is pretty uh, hard. I think I'm getting close to the end of it, but it's burning up a lot of time. So I'm now preparing to ride at night. I don't think my pace is manageable anymore. So kind of kind of chilling out and just making sure I get through this trail safely. It's like a black diamond. And the reason I'm just chill, like my bike can handle it decently. My hands kind of hurt from the brake hump, but if you have a gravel bike, like you're gonna have to walk most of this. So I have a hard time imagining anybody's gonna catch me at this point. Yeah, when I was out there, I was looking at my mom per hour average and I was like oh, okay I'm gonna have to ride at night um, which is something I wasn't really keen on but the the thing that I, I thought I was going really slow and I realized that I had I think I had the fastest single track time through there According to Strava, it was like a two hour or so the single track was sick I've decided that this is a mountain bike but it's super aero. It's just like an aero mountain bike is the way I think about it. The guy who was chasing me and he was racing hard. I talked to him after the race harder. Um, like he wanted to win the race too. So this, when, when I'm talking about all of this, like I was actually racing somebody. I wasn't just like out there like by myself 
Um, the the thing that he had, he had a checkpoint and he put like a 2.1 Schwab Racing Ray or Racing Ralph on the front and then like a gravel tire in the back. That single track, I'm pretty sure most everybody, if you're riding a gravel bike, it would have to walk a lot of that single track. It's just too rough, it's very steep, and I had a full suspension mountain bike where there's kind of two things that happen here. I'm racing mountain bikes and I'm also racing gravel bikes at the same time. The mountain bikes are dead in the water on gravel sections. They just aren't aerodynamic enough to keep up. And then gravel bikes are so slow on the trail. If the trail's rough, if the trail's not rough, it's maybe not as big of an advantage, but especially at this trail. So then the gravel bikes can't keep up with me because I, I still have a mountain bike. Um, and so it's kind of like this, like threading the needle of like, we have gravel bikes over here and mountain bikes over here and my bike's like right in the middle and it's fast at everything. So I do truly feel like this bike has insane advantages in racing applications, especially bike pack racing. I think it's very fast in non-racing applications also, or sorry, shorter racing applications also. The trade road one also, it's actually, yeah, that one. So we had this one built up as a drop bar, full suspension mountain bike also, just like Jesse's, except even more aero with like 38 mil bars and stuff. The reason we took it apart was because this is a large and I definitely need a medium and the brain isn't braining anymore. So it's a, yeah, I have to warranty, have to warranty it. warranty this fork. Since I had experience on this bike, I did, I don't know how many gravel rides on it. I never took it off road, like trail stuff, but this was one of the fastest gravel bikes I've ever ridden on like chunkier gravel, even not super chunky gravel. Where it really shined was like climbing. Like anytime you went up steep hills that normally you would lose traction on a gravel bike, like you could just sit down and pedal and it would just ride up the hill. Where like a gravel bike, you're, you're always like trying to balance it, trying to get traction, trying not to let your tire slip. And I'm pretty sure I got like multiple KOMs on this on trails that I've like ridden my crux. It weighs like 16 pounds on. As a gravel bike, it's kind of amazing how good this bike is. I'm not saying it's the fastest for all gravel races, but I think it should be looked at more as a gravel bike. Yeah, and we will be doing World Cup versus MOG, which I just got that MOG. We just released a video about the MOG recently. So that way we can kind of delete the tire factor out of it because the MOG can fit a big tire too and truly decide if the suspension is worth having or not. For Ozark Gravel Doom, it 100% is. That's what I was also gonna say. For races like Grace Jesse is talking about, where it is gravel and mountain bike sections, probably a lot of super chunky gravel, I've never done it. Assume there isn't a better bike. It's steep too. Yeah, I would think for races like Rule of Three, I don't even know what other. There's a lot of these. Any race, yeah. This technical off-road sections that like beat you up. Like this is a great bike. Or races where you would just want a straight-up mountain bike tire and you don't have a gravel bike that would fit a mountain bike tire. Like. This is what you should do. The only, the literal only thing I would change about my setup is I would in the future run an aluminum handlebar. Pretty much convinced about this being an awesome setup. If you're on the fence, like don't be. It's pretty much the optimal bike pack, lightweight bike packing racing setup for me. I think it'd be optimal for a lot of people. The uh, bike will be compared to Mog at some point in the future, so stay tuned for that. Definitely subscribe for more content like this. So at OARC, I luckily got to talk to some people <laughs> and then also quick resupply, bought all that food. This is where my mental state was pretty much the lowest of the entire event. I was riding, riding. I was starting to figure out like how long I was gonna have to ride in the dark. And I was like really not doing okay thinking about it. Hopefully that gets me through the last 100 miles here because uh, I'm currently winning the race. So I, I guess I'm gonna feel like I gotta keep trying really hard. I'm gonna take it pretty seriously. And hopefully I don't have to ride too long in the dark, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to ride at least four hours at night. My light lasts 12 hours, so it should be no big deal. Definitely not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> That's not anyone's fault but mine.
but it still it still wasn't fun. I, uh, I I kept trying to go as fast as I can, and like I started to remember like, oh, I've been here before, and that kind of helped me refocus. Sweet, so I've got about 90 miles left. It seems like I'm riding what was the beginning of the 400 mile race from last year. So it's kind of a, in a weird way, a little bit of a morale booster to kind of like know where I'm at. I, I know that's weird to say, but like I've been here and it feels good to know that. So anyway, uh, hopefully four hours of daylight left and 90 miles to go. So I'm gonna be in the dark, but I'm trying to mitigate the amount of miles I do in the dark. So I'm pushing pretty hard right now. Yeah. It's a lot of little dots. So this is um, kind of like where it started to get real. I was about 15 or 20 miles ahead at all times, like throughout the race pretty much. But what was going on was a little bit of a hairy situation. My light, which before I say anything, is a truly amazing product that should be celebrated. Yeah, it doesn't last for, I I think the battery life is six hours. So earlier in this video, you might have heard me say that my light could last 12 hours. That is definitely true, but it lasts 12 hours on the blinky mode. <laughs> So I had no idea how long my life would last. Again, I did not even think I would need it. Um, well, I did think I would need it, but not for as long as I needed it for. So now as I'm riding, I'm like slowly watching the battery drain from the light and I'm trying to figure out what to do because Carter is still, he's a while back, but like I'm moments away from my light turning off at any moment and having to figure out how to ride with my cell phone light. The last 50 miles were pretty stressful. I just tried to hunker down and just ride as quick as I could. The last two climbs are extremely steep. All right, here's the situation. So I'm walking up one of the hardest hills in the race. I think it's one of the last ones. My phone might have to become my flashlight, which is cool. I'm about 20-ish miles or so probably 25 miles left. I think this is the last thousand foot climb and it's faster to walk up this. So I'm just gonna walk it and take a break on my legs anyway and save the battery that I have left on my light. As long as I can get to the finish line, I should win. The guy who's been chasing me all day is currently about 16 to 17 miles back, but I've been on this climb. So when he hits this climb, it'll slow him down a lot too. I've been about 10 to 20 miles ahead of him for the whole thing, which has caused me to have to really push hard to keep my position. So I think I can do it because I'm almost done, but hopefully, hopefully we can get her done today. The whole idea was just trying to conserve battery power because I wasn't going, it, it technically would have been faster to ride, but I would have drained so much battery power in my light that I would have wasted, like riding with my cell phone for 20 miles would have been extremely challenging. Whereas I'll spoil it, I had to ride in the dark with my cell phone for five months at the end of the race. <laughs> I had this idea to kind of like volley strap the cell phone to the aero extension with the light shining in front of it, I think that would have worked okay. Because I the, I could charge the cell phone. I have a battery pack. And so I was gonna charge the cell phone and then have the light just like, because that would last as long as, like I had another elite. This would have lasted me until daytime. So I, I definitely had the ability to do it. The problem was, is that I didn't want to do that because that's awful. And so I rode as fast as I could, walked up the last two climbs, and then when it finally died, it was only five miles. So what I did is I held my cell phone in my hand and just kind of rode like this with my cell phone light shining <laughs> like you do, you know. It's actually not too big a deal. Almost 3 a.m. What I ended up having to do also is because I didn't have enough braking force, the, I would put the cell phone like in the bag and like point it up. And it, the, the arrow bars cast a giant shadow, but I could, at the end of the race, it's eight minutes, so I could see the, the lines in the road. And I was like, as long as I'm in the middle of the lines, I'm good. Um, I really was just trying to get home at this point and safely, because I could have walked that five miles and still hopefully have won the race. I'm pretty sure I was uh, had enough lead. Yeah, I had a two hour lead or so at that point. Those last two climbs are hard, especially at two in the morning. So yeah, that's kind of the story. Some other stuff happened in, in there and um, feel free to comment below with any questions that you have. There's, there's 20 hours of riding. It's hard to fit it all into a, a YouTube video. I had a really great day out there and uh, the reason I love this event so much is just 
because the people who run it are so amazing. Andrew kind of, I think he's made something uh, really special with the uh, Ozark Doom and I definitely recommend everybody check it out, give it a try. Uh, the 200 mile, I had a blast at that and I think my time isn't that good. So if you're watching this and you think you can beat my time, please try to, because I think I'm gonna return next year and see if I can beat it myself. Now that I know kind of the course isn't gonna change again, so. Do you think you'll use the same bike? Yeah, yeah, so this bike's gonna stay. Do you think you'll bring another flashlight? Yeah, so let's talk about that. <laughs> so the flashlight, Ed told me that even if I had a cable that would have charged that flashlight, the flashlight battery is more powerful than, the, than my power brick, so it actually would gone opposite the light would have just charged my power brick and i would have drained the light oh quicker. Dang. so it was actually a blessing that i didn't try to charge my light because it would have died quicker did you think about that is that how electricity works yeah it is we're having a mechanical big mechanical we're just trying to leave y'all and uh we're not electricians we're learning i just saw it I saw you come down this there. Is bad. <laughs> He's like, this like, is bad. You're saying goodbye. And then you were like, I came down and I was, I was like, like, come help me. This guy was, yeah, that was awesome that he did that. We were trying to leave. It was like we'd been there for like four days and we were like, let's get out of Arkansas. And that happened. But Scott had a very early mechanical and then just was super uncomfortable. So his backpack ended up hurting his back a lot more than he anticipated. And so he's going to, me and Scott are working on a new project. We're going to take his bike and transform it into this. Stay tuned for that in the summer. Um, he's, he told me that he really, really loved the 100 miles that he made it through and wanted to give it another try when he can. We're gonna turn his super caliber into the ultimate bike packing rig, kind of like this. So future YouTube video, stay tuned for that. And then Lalo kept trucking on. He, I think, would have eventually finished, but the pace that he was going at was just too slow for a realistic timeline that we had. And so we went out and met him and ate lunch with him at Hillbilly Slims. And that was where he was like, you know what? I just want to make it to two and we thought like, hey, that's a great goal because I don't know how many miles he's doing a day, but it was about 60 miles a day or so. It took it took him three full days, two nights to get to 200, and so that would have taken it would have taken him a full week to finish, and that would have been hard. Also, Easter Sunday kind of cripples your resupplies, so when you're out there, he was out there out of food, and it's also Easter, so all the stores are closed. So it kind of it kind of strangleholded his ride into being a little bit hard to finish. I do believe Lalo could have finished that, but like he said, he's gonna um, re uh, reconfigure strategy and uh, maybe try the 200 next year. Because yeah, we didn't really have a week to burn to, to wait on him to finish the race. Ah, okay. Yeah, so the Wahoo overperformed. I had the ability to charge it. This thing ran the map for 20 hours straight and never died and still had like 20% battery left. So they undersell themselves, y'all. Buy a Wahoo. Check it out at thebicyclestation.com right now. Thank you to Wahoo for sponsoring me for to go to this event with the computer. It performed beautifully. Actually overperformed their own quote. So That's kudos, impressive. Yeah, kudos to them because I actually don't know what the battery life is on this now. It's better than 20 hours though, I'll tell you that. So yeah, there's a lot to unpack here. Hit us up with questions in the comments. This is a whole thing. Please sign up for Ozark Gravel Doom if you're interested. It's, a, it's an amazing event, very challenging. It's, it's the hardest event I've ever been to. And that's kind of like my main thing I do as part of events. And so I can guarantee it's gonna be a good time. And I'll definitely see y'all out there in uh, 2025. I just wanna beat my time. I think I, can, I think I can beat my time. So maybe you can also beat me because I think it'd be really cool if more people entered despair and treated it like a single day like XC race, I just think that'd be a really fun day, like really chaotic 200 mile XC race. <laughs> it's the new Unbound. It is the new Unbound, yeah. It, it feels like a special event. They've got something special going on. Horseshoe Canyon Ranch is a great venue for this event. They're gonna have mountain bike trails being built should be ready to go for next year also awesome experience we'll uh, definitely return comment down below if you want trade to do the 400 mile <laughs> we're also going to talk on the haters really quick you were wrong the drop bar world cup is the best bike ever till we compare it with the mog maybe not maybe. we'll see which we'll one see wins i can't wait for that video i know results coming soon subscribe bye